This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on December the 7th, 2015. Enjoy it! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, it's one o'clock, it's time to go down the rabbit hole as per usual. <laughs> and um, today I'm going to talk about um, DVD and CD burning software. I'm going to show you how to install it, uh, which program to use. Uh, a lot of you have the program on your computers already, but I'm going to show you how to get a newer version if you want. The old version will work just fine. If it's working, don't fiddle with it. Uh, but there is a newer version out there. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is where to get what. And the program that I like for burning software for, for just the average Joe user is a program called A Shampoo. A Shampoo. The letter A and the word shampoo, all one word. And um, yeah, we'll find you a chair. There's one right there. Thank you. Okay, a shampoo the uh, burning studio free. You want to look for the free one, okay. And um, as I always say, you want to go to the website that um, it is the owner of the software, not a third-party website like Download CNET or something like that. Uh, the only other one I recommend is uh, Major Geeks. You can go there and get it. But uh, as a general rule, we want to go to the website uh, that belongs to the software. And uh, we're going to download a shampoo burning studio free. And there's our big old download green download button for free use. And um, it says it's the full version. Now the older versions might have been crippled that they wouldn't do um, Blu-ray DVDs or something like that. But for you folk, that's neither here nor there. It does everything you want it to do. So we're going to go ahead and download um, the uh, full free version. Now I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, and in uh, in my case, it's uh, in it downloads to my downloads folder, and there it is: a shampoo burning software. So let's go ahead and install it. We do that by just double clicking on it or right click and click on open. It's going to ask you for your user account control permission and we'll go ahead and follow the prompts to set up everything we need to. You agree to what it wants to do now. At this point it wants a license key. Okay. Now You can go to what you need to do if you're going to do this new version. You need to get the free activation key. I'm going to click on it just to show you. And it's going to take you back to the A Shampoo website. And at this point, hmm, can't reach this page. A. It's going to take you back to the, uh, it should take you back to the A Shampoo website. And um, it's going to want to um, get a little bit of information from you. First off, your email address. Then it's going to send you a link to your email right away. Then you follow that link back to the A Shampoo website. 
you give it a little bit more information and it, and it will give you a license key. Okay? Um, just for the Is sake... Is there any way you can split the screen so you can see both of those uh, be working on either side of the screen so that you don't lose something while you're going somewhere else or going back? Sure. You can, you can make your windows a little smaller like that. Okay. Make them half size and move them around. How do you make it smaller? Yeah, you just use up here the, your window resizing button in the middle. Okay. Um, now, what I'm going to do, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to um, try and get to this through. And no, it's not letting me do it through here anyway. Well, it doesn't really matter because I did all of this beforehand and I have the license key. So I'm just telling you that it will take you back to the, um, to the website where you'll answer a couple of questions. It'll send you an email. You go to your email. You click on the link. It takes you back to the A-Shampoo website where you answer a few more questions and you will get a license key. Copy that license key and put it in a text document. And you can do it as I have done. A te just a plain text document. Why is it good for overnight? No, it's, uh, it's just so that if you ever have to reinstall it, you have the license key. Oh. Okay? So I made a, a text document called a shampoo key in Notepad, and I just copied the, uh, the license key into there so you always have it. Um, I'm going to copy this now and go back to the a shampoo setup, and I'm going to paste that key in there and tell it to activate now. And it's, there we go, got a nice green check mark. It says it's okay to go. And uh, we're going to use this for all users. And it will load the A Shampoo software onto the computer and give you a shortcut to it. And there we go. We finish the installation. And it wants to go back to uh, the A Shampoo website again. Well, we don't want to do that, so we'll just get out of there and close all this and close all this. And I'll leave that one open for a minute. Now, it has put a shortcut on your desktop that you might not want called My Software Deals. It's just a shortcut to a web page. I don't recommend that you ever touch it, so let's get rid of it. We right click on it and delete that. It's just a shortcut to a web page. It has nothing to do with anything. And here is the A Shampoo burning software um, with a shortcut on our desktop. So let's open it up and we'll look at it. Okay, and there it is, the A Shampoo Burning Software Studio, free. The latest version? The latest version. Um, but like I said, if you have that older version and still working, just keep working with it. It will work fine. Because I probably wouldn't do that all right anyway. Yeah, <laughs> if you have it, keep it. Um, okay, what does burning software do? Uh, as the name implies, it can copy files and images to a CD or a DVD. It burns them into the surface, hence the name burning. Um, what it's really doing is it's getting control of
What it's really doing is getting control of the hardware in your computer properly. And the get, what it's getting control of is your DVD CD writer. The hardware inside your computer. It's a program to get control of it. And that's all it really does is, is it gets control. So when we go back to the software, um, we can do a lot of things with it. When you say burn data, you can make um, your going, data is any file. It can be music, it can be movies, it can be programs, it can be documents. Data is a file. Okay? Don't get confused by the names, but let's keep the names separate a little bit. Um, you can make a backup and a restore copy of files. In other words, you can make archives. But why would you want to do a backup and restore when you're just you're going to do you're going to burn data anyway? So let's keep it all simple simple. Backup and restore for all intents and purposes is just making a data CD or DVD. Music is a special case. It cre a, an audio CD created on your computer is the same format as you would buy from the store. Okay? The, the songs and titles are exactly the same format as a music CD, an audio quality CD. So if that's the case, we can create an audio CD, a brand new one, if we have all kinds of music files in MP3 format, which is not an audio CD format, by the way. It is a file format, or WMA, or any of the other um, formats for entertainment files. They are not music CD format. They are just data. And then you can, it gives you the option to copy music files to a disk. Um, I wouldn't worry about that one too much because all you're ever going to do is either create an audio CD or create an MP3 disk for, uh, for the MP3 file format. Yes. It's been a few years, so but I have CDs which will play, music CDs which will play on the computer, but won't play on a <coughs> DVD player. They might be in a different format than the MP, <coughs> than the, uh, the DVD player can recognize. Um, what you can do is you can go in, you can open up that, um, that, see, is this music that you burned or you bought? Yeah, it's music that I burned. Okay, then in all probability what you did was you, you just burned an MP3 file or a w, WMA file, which is a data file, to a disk. And that's why the computer can read it. The CD player can't read it unless it's in the CD music format, okay? So which uh, file ending do I need for that? Um, well, if you have, M I'll show you how to, uh, how to get back and forth from MP3 and WMA to a CD audio quality. Uh, we'll get to that in a few minutes. The other thing you can do is if you have music that you've bought, you went to the store and you bought Adele's latest CD. You can bring it home and you can rip it down to files. Okay? Now, that is not illegal. It's not. You are making copies, backup copies, of something you own for your own personal use. If 
you give it to somebody, that's not the case. But for your own personal use, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I see you yeah, with a quizzical. Protected so you can't rip them. Um, so. In the in years ago, years ago. And how do you get around that? Um, <laughs> years ago, um, music CDs, and they still have it, um, had. Um, a, a protection on them that would say uh, to the computer that was trying to rip them, okay, you've put me in a computer CD drive. Okay, you put this music in a computer CD drive. I'll let you listen to it. Yeah, listen to all you want. And you might even be able to turn on your audio recorder on your computer and record all the audio that's going through it. But if you want to take the files off and turn them into something else, I'm going to stop you from doing that. It turned out that all you had to do was hold down the shift key when you clicked on the DVD and all of that went away. You just shift click and it would open up and the, the music protection software was no longer there. Or it was there but it wasn't, it wasn't being used. Okay, all right. That, I mean, that's as simple as it was. Modern things like, like uh, a shampoo are, don't have that problem. Okay, they don't have that problem. You can just go ahead and rip the music. So you put a DVD, or, or I should say you put a CD into um, your CD bay, click on Rip Audio CD, it will go there, and it will make a file format of folders, and throw all the music in there, and then it will go out to the internet, it will get all of the information about those files, uh, the artwork and everything, okay? And when you go to uh, make a music CD or a mixed tape out of this music that you've got, okay? All of the ancillary uh, files will be with that music format that they'll go with it and uh, it will be really pretty, not just chunky and clunky like it was 10 years ago. If I buy a CD then, because I have to buy CDs for one, maybe two songs on it, can you just pick the songs you want? Yes, you can. You can rip down the whole CD and just pick the ones you want to copy back on to another music CD format or just save those files uh, to your computer and play them on your computer, however you want to do it. Um, you can call them tracks or something. Yeah. The, the other way, yeah, remember that the other uh, function that you have here on the A Shampoo burning software is and it will copy anything you put in to this CD DVD drive. Where will, it, will it ask you where to put it then? Well, if you're just doing a plain old copy disk, uh, you click on copy, it goes to the drive, the DVD CD drive, it takes all of the information it finds there and it takes it off of there and it puts it down in, in a temporary place. When it's all done with that function, it will tell you, okay, I'm finished with this, Take that CD out and put a blank CD or DVD in. Click on continue and it will take all of that stuff that it found and put it all back on the new disk just exactly the way it found it. A copy. A bit for bit copy. Isn't that cool? Um, no, it, it puts it into a temporary folder and then when it wants to copy it back, it goes to that temporary folder and burns it all back. And then that temporary folder is gone? It should go away, yeah. Um, okay, and for the most part, copy disk will uh, work with anything. It'll work with music. It'll work with disks that you've got software on. Okay. 
that you bought new software. Say you have uh, yeah, you have um, new software for your brand new printer. Okay, it's always good to make a backup copy of software that you get with with uh, hardware because you will lose it, you will scratch it, you will step on it and break it. Okay, so yeah, make a backup disk, copy disk. It will copy movie disks as well, as long as they are not um, Blu-ray discs or any, um, any of the HD formats of the movies greater than 720 um, pixels progressive. So um, it can copy movie discs, but usually it's going to copy the older ones, not the new ones. Um, there is a way to do that, but we're not going to get into that. That is stealing. <laughs> Um, and so another thing that you can do is you can make a disk image or you can burn an image. Now, the real important part of this software is to be able to burn a disk image. You can go to the internet and you can find a copy of Windows 10 on the internet. Windows 10 that you have. The home version, the pro version. And it's going to come to you as a file, a great honking big file called an ISO. It's just one great big ball of data. And what it really is, is an image of a DVD with that data on it that you would buy from the store or you would get with a new computer which you don't anymore. But you can download these disks from Microsoft as an ISO image and then you can burn them as a DVD or a CD whichever they fit on, they fit on a DVD and when that's finished you can put those disks in your computer and you can reload Windows 10 if you have to or you can repair your copy of Windows 10 if you have to. And that's why burning an image is so important. You can, you can go and get original, original programming for your computer or your operating system. It comes to you as a great big ball of data, one great big ball. And when you put it into this software and tell it to burn an image, it will go to that data ball, tear it all apart, and put all of the folders back in the right places. Is that on the yeah, and then um, it will also make the the uh, disk the disk bootable, so that the computer can boot it if it's sick. Uh, it can boot this in this this software, and you can get in and you can fix your computer. Now, that's probably not for somebody like you. No, no, it's no, it's that's not going to help you. Well, what um, about? I mean, I've loaded Windows 10 a couple of times and gone back to seven. Can I take Windows 10 and put it on disk? Yes, that's what I'm saying here. You can go to the internet. I don't. I mean, I, I can't go to my taskbar and. I mean, how did you get Windows 10 in the first place? Well, it's on there, you know, it's for me to yeah, okay. Uh, that's one way to do it. And because it's not working well, it might be damaged as a download. It might be damaged. So if you go back to Microsoft and you get the original disk that was created by Microsoft in this ISO image and download that whole thing and put it in a folder somewhere. Then you can use this software to make the original Microsoft Windows 10 disk. Okay. Now because you have had, you did load Windows 10 onto your computer yeah, a couple of times. and you had it on there for a couple of days, 
Okay, in all probability, if you use this method of uh, installing Windows 10 from a disk, Microsoft will see your computer right away that it had Windows 10 on it and it will make it legal. Because you made it legal from an upgrade, right? But let us just say that your hard drive goes away. It, it's damaged, it's fried, it burns to the ground. Well, all of the, that upgrade stuff that you had on your computer is gone. Okay? You've got to start over. So what Microsoft allows you to do is to load Windows 10 from a disk onto your computer and at the end of it all when the computer is ready to run it will call Microsoft and say remember me I've got this great honking long number this 25 digit number that you gave me a long time ago this says I'm legal confirm that I'm legal and make me legal and it'll do it you don't need that original equipment number from a disk with Windows 10 it does it all by itself through the Microsoft servers so you could do that once you once you had Windows 10 loaded once your computer should be uh, able to load it over and over and over and over again and be legal that's cool well you're if, if uh, number one it's almost impossible right now to fool Microsoft with, uh, with a Windows 10 copy that, one, you haven't paid for, two, that you don't have the original equipment number, you didn't buy it, or it's not an upgrade. Okay? So it's almost impossible. So there's, there's where they've got you. Somewhere down the road, some hacker or cracker will fix it so that, yeah, all right you'll be able to get in there. I can do it, but I'm not going to tell you how. Yeah. So that's what uh, disk image is good for. It's an important, uh, it's an important component of the A shampoo burning software. Um, now, it will do rewritable disks. Okay? And so you can uh, you can make uh, a rewritable disk that the, 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 um, the CD or DVD to the computer will just look like another hard drive. You can put files on it. You can remove files from it. Um, you can delete files and add new ones. It looks just like a regular old drive. Um, that's an, sort of an advanced thing and there is no real reason to do it. When you use a DVD to burn stuff and save stuff, four gigs is a lot. Four gigs is a lot. It's the size of a movie file. It's certainly the size of just about any uh, program or program language that you want to load on your computer. So there should be plenty of room on a DVD to save something that you want to use later. Okay? Um, you mean it's not that long? Or does, is it that long? What's that? It says the only way you could save it was a DVD. It had no memory worthwhile in your computer. Um, well, right now you're, a modern computer essentially comes with uh, only two sizes of hard drives, uh, 500 gigabytes or one terabyte. Um, if you fill, I've always said, I, this goes back 10 years to, uh, to uh, early clients that I had in this business. If you have a 250 gig hard drive on your computer and you fill it up, you don't have a life. Because you've spent all your time in front of your computer putting stuff on it. And now for a 500 gig or a one terabyte drive, 
get out of the house more. <laughs> get yourself a life because you really don't have one if you're filling up those kinds of drives. It took me the best part of eight years to fill up. It, it took me the best part of eight years to fill up uh, a 500 gig drive. It took me eight years, okay? But if you do it in a year, there's something wrong with the way you're living your life, please. Okay, there you go. That's uh, a shampoo burning software. Um, most of you have said you have the software. Um, I think um, I've explained it enough to you that if you want to upgrade what you have or start with new um, from the uh, from the video I'm going to make uh, of this, it should be relatively simple for you. Okay. When you go to get your music, Bob, like my music is all sitting in my user file in a music folder. That's where it started. And then now I see Group has taken over and they brought it all into Group. Yeah. iTunes does that. They, and they yeah. organize. And, they and, and, and you have copies everywhere. I know. I mean, it's, and, you know, yeah. um, they're organizing your music for you. Yeah. Is that, yeah. I mean, do you better to just go to your folder? In, in your user account and get your music there and choose what you want to burn? Or sure, sure. You're, you're always better to do that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to open up a shampoo again and I'm going to uh, go into uh, music, uh, create an audio CD, and you'll see that it has opened uh, a window here. Um, where you can add things to it. It's the same when you do data or, or however, wherever you're going to add things to a, a, um, uh, a CD or a DVD. Uh, but you're going to add things to it. Now, I don't have any music on this computer, but I'm going to uh, instead um, just go to, uh, I'm going to go to this music folder. It's empty. Mm. But if there was music in there, I would be able to take that music and just grab it with a mouse and pull it in here. Oh, okay. That's what okay. I did with drag. Yeah, you just drag them over. Now, the th if you do it that way, you can put them in the order you want. Okay, so they don't have to be alphabetical order. They can be the order you, you specify. You know what? I'm sorry. You know what? Um iTunes. Yeah. And everything I do goes through iTunes because that's how I'm paying for it. But if I, two or three weeks ago, or did a couple of songs, they go to my music folder. Yep. iTunes to my music folder. And then a few days later, some more, off the same album, iTunes is putting them all together and I can't separate them. When I drag the song I want, it takes all five that are on the album. How yeah. do I separate them? Uh, can, can you do a right-click copy? Never tried. Just yeah, try right-click copy uh, individual files. And that may, that may allow you to do that. Oh. Okay, uh, but are you doing them from what's called a playlist? Making a okay, you can't do anything like that in a playlist. Um, you have to go back to where the the music files originally reside. Okay, so somewhere on your computer, other than in a folder called a playlist. No, there is no playlist. I have folders like music, pictures, and all. Yeah, but some to... somewhere in iTunes, somewhere in yeah, iTunes, iTunes, there it's made itself a playlist, and that's why you can't do it. Okay, you can't do it from that playlist. It's taking you there by default. You have to go somewhere else to get the original files, and then uh, copy, right-click, copy them, and then try and paste them. And then paste them to my. Yeah, yeah, that should work. Um, okay, so here we go. We've, we're we're moving files into this, and then when that's um, and I'll show you here, if you've, if you've put a CD in it, this line here on the bottom will start to fill up 
to the point of 80 minutes. Okay, that's 650 megs of music. 80 minutes is a music CD. When that's just about full, you've got no more room, you go ahead and you make your burn. Okay, and um, you would click on next and it will allow you to burn or uh, put your, your music CD in your burner. Click next and it will allow you to burn to your, uh, your burnable CD. Um, as you're doing that, remember that uh, to look around for how the software has named the file. It might just say, name it, my music, okay? You can go in there if you see that and you can change it to the name you want. My banjo music, okay? However you want to name it is what you can do. Uh, I am going to stop here for just a second. I think I have a problem here. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah, I just kicked it. I just wanted to know why that light came on. It ordinarily doesn't. Okay, so there we go. That's that's doing music. The same thing holds true for uh, doing um, data files, um, copies of programs, uh, pictures. Okay, remember, uh, a picture is a data file. Okay, so we can uh, we can burn data. So we make a new disk. We can open up. Um, somewhere here that's got pictures, okay, and there's nothing there because I don't keep anything there, but you, we can take, as a matter of fact, you can take the entire folder, okay, you don't have to take individual pictures, if you've got your stuff in folders, just take the folder and drag it over, okay, and it will drag itself into this window to make a data disk. This is an excellent way to make sure that um, you have copies of all of those important pictures. Okay, someday, someday, that computer's going to go away, and all of your stuff is on it. If you have it on a CD or a DVD, at least you haven't lost those important portions of your life. Okay. Please, do not trust one of these things. It's how far can you throw a pickup truck? That's how far you, you trust this. Um, okay, I think we're, we've pretty much, um, I've given you all the information on a shampoo. Any questions about burning files? Yes. I've never burned anything. Um, when you go to buy a DVD or a CD to burn to, how do you know you're getting a quality one and what is it you're looking for? You okay, yeah. Um, CDs and DVDs. All depends on, okay, whether you're going to use CDs or DVDs, I would suggest to you that Outside of music, CDs are going away, okay? Uh, even for music, CDs are going away. Um, if you download music from the internet, for uh, whether you've purchased it or you're getting it for free, uh, it's coming to you as a file, as a data file. And so there's not really much reason to buy music CDs unless you're copying music CDs you have already to a backup copy. There's not much reason to do that. Um, and so, do you want to buy CDs or DVDs? That's the first thing you're going to look at. Do I want to make a copy of my music CDs? If you are going to do that, you must buy CDs.
you can't cross copy a music CD to a DVD. It won't work. The, you can't call a DVD a music CD. It won't work. It won't do it. A CD, download it into my computer, right? Yes. And then copy it to a DVD? You can rip the music out of it and then copy that to a DVD because all the DVD is going to copy is the data file. You can't take a music CD and bring it over without processing it first. Okay, that won't work unless you're going to do a direct disk copy. So that leaves you with buy a DVD. Um, DVDs when they first came out were really expensive. They were about five bucks a pop. Now they're less than a dime. So you can buy a stack of 50, okay, and you can put everything in the world on them. Go with name brands. Memorex is a name brand. Uh, most of the, the big box stores, that's all they carry is name brands. Um, what are you going to pay for them? I don't know. I haven't bought some in so long. I don't know what they're selling for right now. Um, There you go. That's CDs. That's CDs. I don't think it's much more for DVDs. I don't think it's yeah, for, for DVDs. Uh, now, DVDs come, and uh, CDs for that matter, come in two flavors. Plus R and minus R. Okay. For most applications, for most applications, you want to get plus R. Every computer in the world can read both. But for most applications, you want to do plus R CDs and DVDs. What does that mean? It's the, for, it's the format that um, the computer uses to burn the data to the disk. It's just simply a format standard. That's all. Um, so there you go. DVDs over CDs. There you go. Um, it's if you want to keep something for a long, long time, put it on a DVD, and then wrap it up in a piece of paper. Make sure you use a sharpie and name it. What's on it? Wrap it up in a piece of paper. Name that piece of paper. Put it in a drawer, and forget you have it. And ten years from now. It'll be there. They, in pretty much pristine condition. Pretty much pristine condition. Yes? No? No? Yes? Can you put any of this stuff on a memory card? Yes, you can. I don't recommend it except for um, temporary storage. And when I say temporary, uh, less than a couple of months. Uh, things can happen to memory cards. Things can happen. You can put it in your pocket and uh, it can get a bit of lint in it. Like this one does all the time. I gotta go in there and dig the lint out of it. Something can can get down inside of it and when I plug it into the computer it can short it right out. Okay. But if you don't have any lint in your pocket. <laughs> You've got lint everywhere. It's not covered. Yeah. It's in your belly button. It's everywhere. <laughs> um, but these things are delicate. A lot of people say that they're not, but they are. What do you use for? I, the, this is my toolbox. I have all of my tools on here. But I also have them on the cloud. So if this ever goes away, I can reformat it and get it to work again. And then what dump. What are you talking about? Uh, software tools for fixing computers are all on here. So I just plug this into a, into a computer that's acting up and I can activate the tools on it to help me get it under control. So, uh, but all of the tools I have on here I also have in a folder on the cloud. So if this goes away, I can always get them back from the cloud on another, on a new one if I gotta buy a new one or put them back on here. 
the way they should be in pristine condition. Um, but these things, um, except for uh, using them as temporary storage, no more than a couple of months, I don't recommend it. I think you mentioned the magnet on the left. Wipe it, out. it could do. It could do. Um, the computer can wipe it out when you put it in, and um, the computer can get confused about what it is. It can number one wipe all the data off of it, or number two make a small change in how the data is uh, is formatted on here that the computer won't be able to read it anymore. Now you got a problem. Okay, the data is there, but you can't read it. So, um, if you want to keep something for a good long time, DVDs are the way to go. Yes? I noticed you use the uh, desktop pretty, that seems to be your main focus of putting things on, as opposed to putting it on the, the uh, Windows 10 start menu. Is, is there an advantage to... Well, that, they, they, are, they are on the start menu as well, okay? These are just shortcuts. Uh, I like to have things on this on the desktop because um, I'm used to going to the desktop yeah, to get I, what I want. Work, yeah, yeah. Uh, but all of these you will find that they are on uh, they are on they're, my they're yeah they're all on this uh, as well. Oops, I don't know why that's not going down there. Hmm. Okay, it's probably this. Uh, but in, in any event, they're all there um, on, my, uh, on my start menu. Um, that's just preference. It's really just preference on where I like to put stuff. Um, for a long time, what I did was I took all of these shortcuts and I put them in a single folder on the desktop. It On an older computer, it made it load just a little bit faster because it didn't have to process the desktop folder. Like if, if I had 30 or 40 icons on there, it had to process every icon. But if it was just in a single folder, it only pressed, uh, processed the folder. So it made it run a little faster. Can um, I ask an email question? A what? An email question? Yes, an email question. Go ahead. I loaded. I opened the Gmail address. Yes. And I tried to input, uh, import my address book. Right. It wants a CSV file. Yes. Yeah, but source exports as a VCF file. Yes, it does. What can I? Um, what you can do is you can import that. Uh, uh, VCS file um, into um, your people folder and then you can export it as a CSV. <laughs> it's a two-step process. The people folder is email. Uh, no, in, um, in Outlook, in Outlook.com. Um, it's, it's just another way to do it. Um, Let me see here. Let me just have a quick look in. Uh, yeah, it. So you, you've got everything. Uh, you've got all of your your contacts in this proprietary folder uh, format. Uh, where where did you get them from? What what um, what program were you using? Well, I put them in over the years. No, I mean, what pro to what program? On source cable, whatever they use. Oh, so that you're you're going to the internet to get your mail, or are you using? Yeah, I'm going to the internet because I have to go to source cable, right? Yeah. Okay. So all of your contacts are on a source cable web page. Yeah. All right. That that. Uh, um, and the only option you have is to save them as a, a, a VSC. Well, if I export them, they automatically... It's, it's the only option you have? Yeah, it's the only thing it gives me. Is there not a drop-down box there to save? Okay. <laughs> uh, then the other way to do it, um, 
is to um, get yourself a an Outlook.com uh, email address just simply to do this. Um, Um, I hope this is going to come up. Well, it's probably not going to work for us. Yeah, yeah. Light. Well, I have an address for Outlook, um, but it's not loading. It's. Uh, So you're saying, what program does SourceMount or SourceCable, what are they using? Uh, they are, uh, when they use, um, when you use their email program uh, on a web page, they are probably using a program call, called Squirrel Mail, okay, um, which is just a way of um, showing a, oh, here we go. No, I gotta log in. I don't wanna do that. Where did I have this before? I can't remember. That's my problem. I can't remember. Here we go. Okay, I've got to the Outlook.com uh, webpage and I've logged into an email address I have in Outlook.com. Up here in the, uh, in the top left, nine little um, in this little square with the nine little squares inside it. Click on that and it will show you um, a folder called people. Now you can click on that and eventually it should come up. Um, and it will allow you to import those VSC address files. Okay. Once you've done that and you've got them in there the way you want them, you can export them from here as a CSV. Yeah, I may just stay with <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just make sure that uh, I've got uh, I've got your address uh, when uh, when you do all this. Send me an email with your new email address. Um, so we're having trouble with this uh, with the internet right now. Um, gonna have to get your buddy to do more work on it. Uh, Mine went off a couple of times this morning. Yeah. Yeah, that, they may be working on it. It's, it says here that I've got internet access, but I don't. Yeah. Um, okay, any uh, any other questions that we can go with? Yes? I went into Outlook.com and set up an account. Yes. Everything was hunky-dory. The next time I go into Outlook, it doesn't recognize my password or my account. Um, are you absolutely sure you were typing it incorrectly? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had that happen on several programs. You go in and you go through the whole rigmarole. Yeah. You turn your computer off or go away for five minutes and it goes into sleep and you come back. It doesn't recognize you. Yeah. Um, the other thing is is that uh, uh, if you told Outlook.com, remember me in Internet Explorer, and you go to Chrome, it don't know about you. Okay, so wherever you, whatever browser you used in, in to initialize this account, 
And um, uh, Windows 10? Okay, it's, it, you might very well have done it through, through this icon here. Um, you have to go back in through that one. You can't go back in through, um, through Chrome unless you are absolutely sure you know your password because it won't do it. You've got to go back in through the browser that you told Remember Me. Yeah, a lot of people like it. Um, uh, it's it's uh, there. There have been issues over the last six months or so with Chrome um, and how Google is maintaining it. Uh, they're not doing a great job, but it's still working okay for me. So that's why I'm using it. I'm getting more and more used to um, having um, this new browser in Windows 10. Um, it's fast enough. It I just got to find my way navigating around, and, as you all have to. Yeah. But it's fast enough. I put all your stuff. I imported it yeah. into Edge as well as into Chrome. So if yeah. I use one browser, it's in the other. So exactly so. Yeah. Exactly yeah. so. Yeah. So uh, try that uh, for your, uh, to get back into your Outlook account. You'll have to go back in through the, through the browser you made it in. Um, anything else? Yes? I will stop my computer going to sleep. It goes to sleep after about five minutes, and then in another five minutes, I can't wake it up. I have to turn it off with the button. Okay. And then, of course, there's a whole rigmarole to turn it back yep. on. Okay. Uh, control panel. Control panel. I did look in there, and I couldn't find nothing to help. Well... Uh, where you have to look yeah. is in Power Options. Now, because your computer, your uh, laptop is always plugged in, um, you want to uh, do this in what in in the uh, default. It's called the Balanced Plan. Okay, when you click on the Power Options, it's going to open us up and go to the Balanced Plan. Okay, and when you click on when you click on change plan settings, it will give you this screen. Okay, and it's going to tell you how it's going to how it is currently working your computer uh, with with it strictly on battery, not plugged in battery alone. That's not the case for you. You're always plugged in, so how it's always plugged in. Okay, I have mine set so that I it turns the display off, turns off the the computer display in five hours. I don't know why it went to one minute, but I want it to do five hours. And put the computer to sleep, never. Yeah, well you can make that change here, and then you save the changes. And that should work. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, it also there we go. Okay. One last question for today. When you mentioned, I like to go through Windows 10. Yep. You're, you're meaning when you click on the left icon to get all that paraphernalia. You, you like to go through there rather than the other way. You, you just mentioned that Windows 10 is quicker to get, find something. Oh, um, through through the the internet browser. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one right here, yeah. this blue E, yeah, yeah. Um, that's the one I am starting to use a lot more now. I'm getting used to it. Um, I have set it up now, so it's it's usable for me, yeah. and I find it is quicker, um, less likely to crash, and all of that good stuff. Um, so I'm finding it easier to use. Um, when um, if you really, really, really want to, 
you can go back to Internet Explorer and the way that you would do that is you have to start Internet Explorer and there it is Internet Explorer once you have it up and running you can go down here to this icon for Internet Explorer and you can right click on it and it will give you the option to pin it to the taskbar here so it will always appear there whether it's on or not okay but if you have these two if you have Chrome and you have this you have plenty yeah. which browser brings up Bing they all do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They all do. Um, getting rid of Bing in uh, in the Edge browser is it's a huge pain. I thought I'd I'd done it several times, and I go back in and no, it's still there. There's still Google coming up one year. Yeah, but it's 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 uh, it's Google coming up, but it's not. Uh, when you tell it to do a, a complex search, it's not the first place it searches, it searches Bing first. Yeah. It's not right. It shows exactly the same as Bing does. Yeah, sometimes. It's yeah. Um, okay, that's it for today, folks. There's our hour. Thank you so much. I will have this up on the web as soon as I can. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.